Central Station, at the heart of Glasgow for 140 years. Meet the people who make the station work. Running over 950 trains a day for 32 million passengers a year. Every day there's always some challenges. I've got good optimism every day. You have to have as a station manager. There's one thing I hate is an unhappy passenger. It's supposed to look like it's going to look clockwork. That's because we're really good at it. Guys, if you through the wide gate over there, please, thank you. Organised chaos. <laughs> They're going to make it work. Central to Glasgow. That's Glasgow Central. I'm ready for my close-up now. <laughs> no job's too big or small. So Monday is pigeon check day. I'm going to count pigeons. Day and night for one long summer, we follow the people working all hours to keep the station on track. This time on Inside Central Station. I'd just like to thank all customers that you are travelling with us today on our very special Ride with Pride train. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your journey. We've got a bit of a disruption going on downstairs, which affects everything going towards Partick. It's great fun. Oh, okay. You know, it's an icon. All that work done, the craftsmanship. Wow. I bet you thought we did nothing, eh? <laughs> Today we've got a multitude of things on, as you can probably see in the round the station. We've got people meeting up for the annual Pride event, which usually injects a wee bit of colour to Glasgow and certainly to Glasgow Central. I think um, everybody's definitely made a good effort this year. Set your gates, darling. All right. It's actually been really busy because the Pride March on today, but everybody's been like really nice, really fun, dead enthusiastic. So, yeah, they've been really nice. On top of that, get people going about their day-to-day -day business. We'll also probably see some football fans coming through prior to the season starting. So, all in all, it makes for a busy, busy Glasgow Central for us today. With the weather being nice, who can blame them? The annual Pride March brings tens of thousands of people into Glasgow to walk in and watch the colourful parade and events, with many local groups and businesses taking part. We're all celebrating Pride today and we've all come together, all Scott Rail, Network Rail, Abellio Scott Rail as a group to go out and support. I've actually met lots of people. Uh, there's nurses actually over in the concourse and there's other people that are all meeting here, so it's a real meeting point. Proud to be nurses! Yay! It's great fun and it's great to welcome them into the Glasgow Central Station. Today's Pride events celebrate our LGBT communities, but everyone's welcome to join in the fun. And more visitors are on the way. Very warm welcome on board, ladies and gentlemen, and just like to advise all customers that you are travelling with us today on our very special Ride with Pride train. We will shortly be making our way through with the flags and face paints. If you don't want to join in, then please do feel free. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your journey. And also remember, Ride with Pride. That was so bad, but I mean, on the spot, it's kind of good. <laughs> Thomas is working on a scheduled West Coast mainline train to Glasgow Central and getting the passengers ready for Pride. We can't oh, do that, we'll just say... A little bit of sparkles, nice, isn't it? We support Jeez. LGBT, so they can't... I think I might have actually got more on the floor than I did on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to what you know. <laughs> And you know nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing about face painting. Do you want one? Yeah. Right, go on then. Hopefully. Oh, you've oh, got wow. a definite Zen. Oh, 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 lovely. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Never expected no, that when you voted. Oh, we did. <laughs> Thank you. Being part of the LGBT community, it definitely does give me a sense of pride that the company that I work for is so engaged and so involved in 
events like Pride. <laughs> I think I could end up in Vogue. Well, I think, I think we look fabulous, well, so... Yeah. Yes, yeah. I, think, I think he's done very well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready for my close-up now. Listen to me. <laughs> of course, not all of today's passengers are headed for Pride. Going to the football, going, going to watch the game, so... And what better way to watch the game with a little bit of glitter? <laughs> In the station, even more rail workers are gathering ahead of the march. We are heading off to the Glasgow Pride March. I'm here with like another couple of drivers and my two dogs. I made some bandanas for Jake and Daisy. I was going to make them coats, but it's a little bit too warm, I think, for them to be wearing coats. And I made a cover for Daisy's lead. Got a different uniform on today. Uh, I don't know if orange is my colour, but uh, I thought I'd try it out today. So yes, and I've got my trainers on just so that I can walk. No, I've got my heels on. I'm not glittering everybody's lives up pouring tea and coffee. When I first started, when I was learning tea and coffee, I was like this. But now, just elegance, it's poor. Because you get used to supporting yourself on the table. Lady, do you just like any tea or coffee? I'll have a tea, please. Tea. It's a fine art, pouring tea oh, at 125 nice. miles an hour. Definitely learned a, a few things about myself while being on this train. I'm wasted pouring tea and coffee. I should be like oh, an, an entertainer. <laughs> the train will shortly be arriving into glamorous Glasgow. We hope you have enjoyed the ride. And had fun being glitzed and glam. So I was riding on the Pride train. And we hope you do have a fabulous Pride weekend and enjoy your time in Glasgow. Love from Virgin Trains. I definitely think through the years, Glasgow has become more accepting of these sort of events. And it's so nice to be part of that, like bringing people up that are going to the event, like getting involved with people on the train. It definitely is nice to see the growth of it. So they've painted the front of this train with the rainbow flag, and we've got the hashtag Ride with Pride. Fabulous. <laughs> It is really easy to look at the glitter and the flags and the colours, but it's so much more than that, which is what we are always trying to put across to people. See you at Pride! The whole reason behind Pride, that we're wanting to involve everybody, so everybody's equal, you know, like if you're gay, straight, it doesn't matter, like you're just, you are a person. It's just about acceptance, that's the whole thing behind Pride. Young train enthusiast James is also here to see the special train. I was on the Twitter feed, Virgin Trains Twitter feed, a couple of weeks ago, and I found out that they were going to have it coming up into Glasgow for today, being uh, Glasgow Pride Day. So I was looking into that and I decided, well, I might come in and see if I can catch it. So I, was, I found myself quite lucky today and I went in and found it. Fairly unique with its paint style, and it's, it's pretty different from the rest of them at the moment, as they're all going under a refurbishment program. So they're all getting repainted, and this is one of the unique ones at the moment. It's pretty different from the rest of the fleet, so quite a good one to spot. James keeps a careful note of each individual locomotive he spots here in the station. This is my, my notes that I keep. I've got the rolling stock that comes in now for you. But this is where I keep this class of locomotive, 390. And I've recently had to go through it in a Tipex, the old name and change it from the original name, which would have been 101 Squadron, to its current name, which is Virgin Pride. James continues a proud hobby that dates back to 1942, when a young rail clerk called Ian Allen published the very first guide to British trains. He effectively invented the pastime of train spotting, 
and kicked off a post-war craze which hundreds of thousands of young people enjoyed. We've got uh, another Virtue Trains Pendolino, but it's in the original style livery, which is currently being like with withdrawn, so they're going to be repainting it in the next coming weeks into the new style livery that's over here. That's it, they're coming in. Don't know what number it is yet. <laughs> 126, that's for don't think I've seen this one yet. So I'm going to head up to find the nameplate of the Vengeance, and I'm one of those people that takes a photo of the nameplate. I do not. So this is the, the name of the vehicle, which is named Virgin Enterprise. So there is Virgin Enterprise there, 398126. And because I've got a photo of the nameplate, I've got a wee N. So I know that I've got a photo of it. Today on the main concourse, the afternoon commuter rush is building. You're sitting noticing probably about four o'clock. Um, you'll start to see a difference uh, in the amount of footfall, especially passengers waiting, just looking for their trains from the departure board. There is more departure boards up there, and then it'll give you a head start. All right. Attending the barriers are a team of customer service assistants. Thank you. We tend to be the first people that uh, any of the customers that come into the station have any dealings with, uh, whether it be just passing through or asking for information or asking for timetable information. It says that are they first impression a lot of people have, which is good and bad. Because you need to know what you're talking about. And, and if you don't know, you need to be working with someone that you can pass them on to who is quite competent. You all rely on each other a lot more than you, you realise, so it is kind of like a family. I like it. <laughs> if we are a railway family, what's my role? What am I? <laughs> if we're a big family... The dodgy, think... the dodgy cousin. <laughs> I said grumpy cousin. It's a dodgy cousin. I said grumpy cousin, I was close. I knew there'd be a cousin somewhere. <laughs> Today's evening peak seems to be going smoothly. This 1806 Neilston is our, our busy one. It kind of sort of signals the end of our peak. Once we see that go, it's like a sort of, ah, you can breathe. Um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of busy trains during evening peak, but this seems to signal the sort of end of it. You don't get the build up uh, so much after that, unless there is disruption. As well as the usual commuter crowds, a large number of gig goers are passing through the low-level platforms on their way to the nearby Exhibition Centre station, where tonight, Glasgow's huge 13,000 capacity hydro venue is hosting a concert by Paul Simon. Just take a step back for me, please. Thank you. Here you go. Thank you. Scott, your jet manager. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've got a bit of a disruption going on downstairs, a uh, points failure, which affects everything going towards Partick. So, um, try to get the boards to marry up with what's happening. So. Guys, there's no trains, no letter to sign. Nothing money to down here. First bus. Can you just pick up the first bus? Uh, there is a signal failure between the Partick and Exhibition Centre that has put all trains off. Yeah, it's great fun. Oh. We don't have a radio signal down here or anything, so we're struggling to pick up messages from the bosses telling us exactly what's going on, because we don't know when it's going to be fixed. Very good. Are you going to the concert? There is a signal problem between Exhibition Centre and Partick. Of course, since it's a concert on tonight, of course that's where it's going to be. I'm sitting in the railway 
station Got a ticket for my destination mm. Hi, are you all right? No, not at the moment. Where are you going to? Um, Annie's land. Right, there's no trains running down here just now. Oh, um, right. There's okay. signal problems between Exhibition Centre and Partick. Uh, if Queen Street is an option for you, it might be right. off going to Queen Street. Okay, I'll try that. All right, right, thank you. Where are you going to? Motherwell. Upstairs, 20 past Lanark train. It's between platforms three and six. Where are you going to? Okay, you better off going to Queen Street. We don't have any trains here just now. Oh, you need to get a bus. Yeah. Do you know where you're going? Yeah. Thank you. Due to disruption of call, deal and call manager in, so you'll deal with the customers. So I'm off the hook. <laughs> John's come in to save the day. It was that bad the glasses didn't go away, we'll have to come in and save Cheryl. Bail me out, am I body down? Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> when Feeling small when tears are in your eyes, I'll dry them. Okay. So you get off the bus times where people are just where they're going to, right? Yeah. Good. Although these new sheets have been given are totally different. Okay. Yeah. The track guys have had to take a total line block, which blocks the whole area. They will then get down. They think they've identified it as a micro switch, which is potentially faulty. So hopefully, when they get that fixed, we should be flight seven and moving. But at the moment, if it's to stop all traffic into the, the low level services or so. Even a small technological failure on the line can be hazardous. So services have to be halted until it's fixed. Hi there, are you okay? Slight update to that, it looks like they've, they've actually managed to rectify the fault uh, and we have services running again within the next five minutes. But what will probably happen, as always happens, is trains will be out of sequence and drivers will be out of sequence, so therefore probably take a good hour and a half for things to get back up to, to speed again. So. Well, there, there, there's obviously an event tonight, so I, which normally doesn't happen until eight o'clock, so I'm, hopefully we'll, we'll get some services going again and get a lot of these people along to their, um, their night out. What's on the right? Uh, Paul Simon. Paul Simon. Paul Simon of all things. There you go. I'm not sure if it'd be worth a while waiting for the next train, which might possibly go, but you can use these tickets on the local bus service along to the exhibition centre. Platform 17 for the Mackay yeah. train. Yeah. We've got to head down on the platform now. We have been told that the train is on its way. It's going to be through Cord shortly. According my sister, means it's moving. Yes. Just getting yeah, trained back in sequence again, you know, so... You know that I'm here, but things now, are... But now we've got John... Th th things are fixed suddenly. Over. I know. <laughs> he turns up and everything goes back to normal. We've only we've done that every day. <laughs> Just keep it calm, things will go. There's no point in panicking, it doesn't fix anything. Services are restarting. But there's still a backlog of passengers to clear. We've had a really long day. I've had transport nightmare all day. My car broke down. I was in a taxi that had a ding with another car. We're now here waiting on a train that's stuck somewhere else. So the lovely girls here have decided to volunteer to help the wonderful staff out this evening. What's number is it? I don't know. 263267. Thank you. It's more reliable at the moment to get the bus. However, our trains are coming back on and they are quicker. Thank you. 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 Escaping home when my music's playing home when my love lies waiting silently for me silently for me
Good morning, David. How are you? Well, David, can you go my diagram there, please? Yeah, five o'clock you are, so you're going out to Corker Hill and you're going to bring in the 650 Nettis. And then you're going to do 654 to Barhead and back. Okay? Thanks, lovely, thank you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Right, we're going for taxi. The taxi's out with 20, uh, is it 20 pass. Okay, yeah. ScotRail employs over a thousand train drivers. Rab is on the early shift today. I've been in this job for 42 years. I think I'll, I'll stick with it just now. He's fetching some of the first morning commuter trains from the overnight depot at Corker Hill, four miles away. Well, there's no trains go to Corker Hill at this, at this time in the morning, the depots. So it's, we have to get transported out, the cabs that take us out there. We pick up the empty coaches and bring them back into Glasgow for the start of service from Glasgow Central. Good off. See you later. There's been a depot at Corker Hill since 1896, and today a fleet of 63 trains run from here. That's the washer. That's it. Washes trains. Everything you get in the normal car wash, you get that in a stretch of line. We bring trains in at the, the end of service at night. We'll come into the depot and we're relieved by the depot drivers. And they'll take the trains through the wash. The cleaners will come on, clean the train. This gentleman that we're going to see just now, he's called the yard coordinator. Ricky's the top dog here. Thank you, are at all. Anyway, what you do. Is that a 6.11? No. No. Oh, it's a 5.51. Sorry, maybe timing a bit early for me. Aye, you better have my cup of tea. Remember the days you used to make it for me? I think you're at 501, coincides what I've got on my diagram, so I can now tell that is my train to take to Glasgow Central. Well, what I'm doing is doing a basic check, basically anything untowards it shouldn't be. The train seems to be okay. That tells me I'm um, good to go. This is taking me into Glasgow Central, in the Glasgow Central area. So all trains are running from this point onwards, 20 miles an hour. When I joined the rail, I was just 18. I have got fond memories of Glasgow Central and other people I've known through the years. But after meeting my wife, the second day as we arranged to meet, the most common place we knew was Glasgow Central Station. We didn't spend the day in Glasgow Central Station. I'm going to detach one train from the other. In effect, make this two trains. We're going to be going to Barhead with only two coaches. That's that. Patricia, that's as good to go. Rab's morning route takes him from Glasgow Central to the town of Barhead, around seven miles away. There's been a station at Barhead since the line opened in 1848, over 30 years before Glasgow Central was built. That's me changing ends now. The return journey back to Glasgow. 
Just outside the station is a traditional signal box where Signaler Brian works. When you first come into a signal box, it's terrifying. There's bells and lights and trains and then all these numbers and you've got to... The rule books, there's three rule books, uh, as thick as a phone book. So you've got to memorise that. That's what the job, that's what you get paid for. Their day-to-day -day running is usually, if everything works, it's great. Um, Brian's been working on the railways for nearly 20 years. What we've got here is Victorian technology, essentially. This is basically a system that's been working for 100 years. So these guys were really amazing designers. The old system is primitive, but so is the whole system of running the railway. The railway is all about having one train, any one section, at any one time. That's the whole safety principle behind the railway. So it's pretty simple. You don't need to overcomplicate it. But the more and more trains you put onto that system, then it starts to get complicated. Since the dawn of train travel, the principle of railway signalling has always been the same to communicate clearly with signal boxes up and down the lines to avoid potentially deadly train collisions. Brian communicates with the boxes before and after his position on the line. It's all bell codes, so you'll hear a little bell. So now, now he's giving me call attention, saying, are you ready for the next train? I'll give call attention back. So that's four bells. So I'll do switch to reverse. One, two, three, four. That's me saying I'm accepting the next train, which is a class one. And I'll give a long plunge, it's called. And that, that, that sends an electrical signal to allow the guy on the, the next signal box to pull the signals off for the next train. So basically we've agreed that the, the line is now clear and I'm ready to accept the next train on. Don't know if that made any sense whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, because you've been working with guys so long, you get to know the different speeds of bells, and you, you think it's just a bell, but there's wee subtle differences when it comes to the different bells. You've got, like, Machine Gun Kevin. <laughs> He's quite quick with the bells. And then you'll have uh, John at Kilmarnock. <laughs> He's got the death bells. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, so, yeah, you can usually tell. <laughs> you're also on the end of the phone, so you know you're working with experienced guys either side. So if there's something that comes up that's maybe ne never come up before, then you can give them a call. Because no matter how long you've done the job, there's always something comes up. For example, if a swan lands in the line, you've got to stop trains, because it's the Queen's animal. So you've got to stop uh, trains for it, and you, you need to call out the mobile operations manager. So sometimes they'll come and pick the swan up and carry it off, or a swan needs a run to, to, to take off, so it's got to have a big runny up and uh, take off. There's no way I'm going down to pick up a swan, so I'll just stay in the box if you don't mind and let you guys do it, I'll phone them. We've got two different systems. The next box up to me is West of Scotland Signaling Centre, which is the new modern way in the railway. And you can see the screen up here, it's all computerised now. If you go up to West of Scotland, there's lots of these screens. In the north of Glasgow, the west of Scotland signalling centre has been open since 2008 and controls a wide area of rail network, including trains running in and out of Glasgow Central. This 21st century system is replacing the old, manually controlled signal boxes. But at the moment, both technologies run in parallel to keep the rail network moving safely. Over here, some of the guys have got loads of trains on their screens at one time, so they're dealing with them all at one time. You know, it can be very difficult. You need to really be good at multitasking. Yeah, this is what uh, us guys, the shift managers, use to look at the, a, a bigger picture of the, the network. We can see trains coming from Carlisle, where you can actually see how the train is running on this screen because it's all colour coded. In the old boxes, uh, where you tear, there'd be bells sent by the signal in advance or the signal in rear eh, to let the signal know that it was a train entry section. And in here, I don't know if you've heard it in the background, there you go, that wee enunciator's letting that signal know behind me that there's a train coming into his, his workstation. 
Even in this modern facility, trained signalers are key to ensuring the lines are running safely. In Glasgow Central, we have around about 1,200 train movements a day, and every train that's signalled in and out of Glasgow Central is signalled by a click of a mouse. There's nothing automatic about it. A signaller's actually sitting there clicking the mouse in and out of the platforms for 1,200 movements a day. I don't yeah. think there's a concern about becoming obsolete because you're always going to need someone to watch the workstations. You're always going to need a driver will always need a point of contact if uh, anything happens out on the ground. You always need to speak to a signalman. We're always going to be a people-based railway, I think, definitely. Rab is still working on the route between the town of Barhead and Glasgow Central. A friend of mine's uncle, who was a train driver at Eastfield Depot in Springburn, got me an interview there in 1977. So, and the rest is history. Massive changes. I think it's now more health and safety conscious now than it used to be, but like, it's all for the good. This TAS driver's advisory system is very, very good because it reminds you prior to your station, but then when you hit the platform, it tells you when the plat many coaches you've got on. Two car. And it's telling me I've got a two car. When I reach the station, it'll tell me again I've got two car. Two car. Knowing how long the train is stops, somebody getting hurt, badly injured, where you stop on the platform and the, plat the train's not fully on the platform and the doors are energised. People can fall out right onto the six foot and do themselves pretty bad damage. So it, it is very, very important to know. I've had a couple of near misses. Fortunately enough, I've never had a fatality, but I've had like, very, very close to fatalities. I was actually going down to driving the train to Gourock and the gentleman was absolutely drunk out of his mind. He was crossing the line. I'd applied the emergency brake and everything and I'd seen, but like, he was still determined he was walking across. I'd blown my horn, I'd did everything necessary to try and make him aware of what was happening, but he was adamant he was crossing the line. And I'd gave up that time, I had my eyes closed, everything, thinking that he was going to go and I'm waiting for the, the thud. But nothing came <laughs> and I'd looked back and he was there, he was just staggering away, which amazed me. He was a very lucky, lucky man. Coming in at the central station, you see how much a diverse city Glasgow is, all the shops, everything, the people, the place, that's what makes Glasgow such a beautiful place and makes Glasgow Central such a beautiful place. It's a busy Saturday evening with the daytime visitors heading home and night revellers arriving. The rush is on. Somebody's left their ticket in the machine. I'm like chatty Cathy. <laughs> I like, um, I do, I literally would speak to the devil. So that's why I speak to everybody. You just get to know everyone. Hiya. Hi, how are you? It's not easy. You do have to work hard for your money. You're constantly watching for so many different things, hazards. No, it might not be on this platform. You don't need to come back out. Sometimes you need to be a bit thick skinned in this job because you do get swore at quite often. My own life TV. Wow. What? What are we famous? It's got good days and bad days. <laughs> but you definitely got a lot more good than bad. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, thanks.
Cheers, man. The thing you find is some of these toilets are broken, so you have to fix them. Sure fine. Alistair's on the busy early shift. Morning commuter trains arrive and depart again swiftly. So he has only minutes to clean each one before it leaves with a new set of passengers. Just in case you make sure everything's presentable for the next uh, lot of people coming on, eh? You need to like to go on a dirty train. This one goes out at 18, so I've got about another six or seven minutes on this. But once you've been through it, you just get off it. One of it. All right. And that's it. Just waiting on the next one coming in now. If you look over on the platform over there, it's the same train as this, and there's hundreds of people getting off. You just got to go in behind them and make sure you get everything off. It's a typical example of any morning in here. It's crazy. It's a lot of walking in this job. I think we do something like eight and a half, nine miles a day. Probably not here, but on these the platforms over there because they're a lot longer. They do about eight and a half, nine miles a day. And then I go to the gym for two hours. In my house, my partner and I do it. The house is spotless. I do all the dishes and the cooking, but she does all the cleaning. <laughs> it's been a long time to find someone like her, but we found her. story I believe I understand it's going to be under the clock the famous place for meeting people this side or that side I'm trying to keep her the same like same size and frame as before so it's like not she's not you know big small big small so and Moretto silhouette seeing that shot to take one we're shooting a film for the Royal Conservatory of Scotland, and this is the BSL English course, which is a first-time course for deaf actors to go through. So this is their final year project, so it's all quite exciting. And so our director here today, Moira, is really speaking to us using an interpreter, and we're really excited. Once he's done the finish on the floor, where he is, looks at B's face, so you want to get B's face in the shot, and then David's taking the bag for makeup, how hard is it to readjust that wig? I think that's a wonderful idea. It's not often you see that. The story of the film is um, it's about a lady who uh, really wants a partner to propose, but he doesn't. But she's got a best friend who she confides in, um, and the best friend is her partner, is dressed as a woman. So the, it's kind of about identity and gender and, uh, and love. A 21st century love story, yeah, that's what it is. I've been writing this story myself and Jamie, and the story is really about someone didn't like being labelled, they wanted to be their own identity, and you, they just loved the person. It doesn't matter whether they're dressed as a female or a male, and that was the essence of the story. I wanted to film in a natural environment. I didn't want it to be fake, and that's why I, I wanted Glasgow Central to capture the, the atmosphere, and that's why I chose here. It's really important to me 
strong connections with deaf people. This is usually where we always meet under the clock. First time you meet someone or if you made arrangements, if you're going somewhere, you always go to Glasgow Central at the, the under the clock. That's the thing I've been doing for years. Tourist Hedy is visiting from Germany. So I just came by train and I noticed the deaf uh, performers working here. And I thought, oh, this is something that I really want to get on camera to show to my friends back home in Germany who are also deaf. In Germany, there's nothing like this. It's very different, and I'm amazed to see this kind of thing happening here. Hi. I had an appointment to go to, but I thought, you know what, this is more important. I think it's amazing to, to stay here and actually watch what's going on. Myself, I'm a Glasgow girl. I'm linked to Glasgow all my life, the community, the culture, the whole environment, the whole area. That's, uh, you know, I'm a Glasgow girl at heart. It's about equality, you know, bringing uh, deaf uh, people, bringing awareness up of deafness and deaf issues and making sure that deaf and hearing people are equal and they can work together well. So I'm really proud. When I was looking for the new shop, I thought this place will be brilliant. And, a great shop. and uh, a really shop. local businessman Hashmi runs a made-to-measure suit shop that has recently relocated to a unit under the main concourse and the famous bridge known as the Helenman's Umbrella. People, when they're coming into Glasgow, they come through the central station. This is the first place they meet Glasgow. So when they walk through it, we should give them a good impression. And if this is done properly and looked after as a heritage bridge and the shops around it, they're and kept clean and everything, this will become a tourist attraction. You know, it's an icon, all that work done, the craftsmanship, you know, the features on the panels. Born in Saudi Arabia, Hashmi married a Glaswegian and has lived in Scotland for nearly 40 years. For my wedding, I needed a suit and uh, I couldn't find one to fit properly or to my liking. And I thought that's a niche market. So that's when I got this idea and started this business. We've been here about now uh, six weeks and uh, one of the things I discovered, which was amazing, it, it was the original features, when I looked at it, for example, there, it says Argyle Street. So I discovered that there are old tiles from when, you know, the station was built, are still there. The tiles Hashmi's refit uncovered show that this shop was once part of an old entrance to the station that led from Argyle Street up to the stairs you see today on platforms nine and 10. The guys wanted to take it off. So I said, no, leave it. And we build the fitting in front of it. I don't want this part of heritage wasted. And there was a, there was an amazing thing here. Uh, when I looked, there's a poster there, which uh, tells about some technical course or something, 1965, 66. I was before I was born. It's a heritage. These are small things make a big thing, especially this central station. When, if you go into the history of it, this was called Highland Men's Umbrella, and the workers from all over Scotland they used to come for a job and they used to stand under this bridge. Different companies would come in, and they will hire them for work. 
So it was a well-known place for that, along with the shops there. We need to preserve it for coming generations to see it, that how and when, and in its orig original form. Because if it lose, like I showed you upstairs, the tiles and all that, originality of it, then there are many iconic new buildings uh, which, you know, are uh, there. So, I don't know what to say. <laughs> this is Glasgow, that's Glasgow case in other way. <laughs> Normally the Glasgow case is... <laughs> I don't... Scottish people, they gave me a place to live. They looked after me. They gave me a lot. And it's my job to make sure that as my capacity where I can, give them something back to find ways to preserve it, make it attractive. So when people come from abroad, they look at it and they say, wow. Oh, Central Street, oh, Central Street has been my life for a long, long time. I'm now nearly 84 years of age. Margaret remembers the station during the Second World War. I was five when it started and 11 when it finished. Yeah, I came through it like I wasn't in it. <laughs> when it was evacuated, we came to the central to get on that train down to Ayrshire. And we were there for months during the Blitz and that. In 1939, 120,000 children were evacuated from Glasgow to the countryside in just three days, mainly through railway stations. Oh, I remember being evacuated, and I just remember walking through the central station, this big hotel up above it. And, well, we, we didn't really understand what was going on. We just knew that we had to have this gas mask and this tin cup. <laughs> And then we were taken away from our mothers. Well, I come from a big family myself, well, then it was, you know, so you can imagine what state my mother would be in, having to deal with that. We were lucky. We lived in a big farm, and you know, uh, in Ayrshire. I remember that. For some evacuees, it was four months before they returned to the city. But the best part of it was when it ended. And we were celebrating. Really, really good. Twenty Virgin trains depart from Glasgow Central to London every day. Their Pendolinos and Super Voyagers can reach speeds of up to 125 miles per hour. But today, one of the London-bound trains isn't going anywhere. Yes, well, what's happened, uh, our 11.40 London Houston has failed at the depot as a set failure. So they've cancelled the 11.40 effectively and made the 12 o'clock London Houston, which just booked to 12 o'clock. But it's only a nine car set. But normally it's 11, we have plenty of room. Lucky way here the day, innit? The set failure means an entire train has had to be withdrawn from service because of a fault. All the passengers from that train will have to squeeze on to the next one, the 12 o'clock. We need to kill the reservations in this train. The reservations are up, so we'll just need to take them out. Uh, so the first will be for the first, the standard will be for the standard, OK? That's only a nine car, eh? Aye, that's busy, I know. I know what you're saying, I looked at, it. I looked at the options, you know what I mean, but if anybody wants to stay back for the 12.40 day boiler, we have to be that. So what we've done is we've took all reservations out of the train and people with first class tickets will join the first class as normal and people will join the standard as normal. But it'll be set anywhere, first come, first served, I'm afraid. It's the only thing we can do. We've got 376 passengers between the two trains, standard travelling from Glasgow and round about 100 nods for the first. So it's quite a busy, busy train. Pa, who's cleaning C? It's my first day working on platforms today, so I've transferred from on board. So I'm shadowing today. 
it's, it's eventful. <laughs> We've got a lot of passengers to get onto the next train, so everyone's got a lot of questions, worried about connections. Reservations on the train, Brian. So, anybody can sit anywhere with a standard ticket, anybody with a first class ticket, sit in the first class. Okay. Just a few stragglers left behind. Hi, you're alright? You alright? Yeah, the queue's empty, we're doing quite well so far. I've got another 11 minutes to go, but a lot of things can happen in 11 minutes. <laughs> I've been waiting to get onto the platform job since I started, so. I wanted to work in the station because I've worked on board, so I've answered questions about tickets, and so I kind of know. <laughs> but yeah, it's a busy day to start on. They've managed to get all the passengers who want to travel on the 12 o'clock train on board. Declassifying the train was the only answer. Hey, Brian. Passengers on, we've got some of them to wait until the next train was shooting quieter, so nobody shouted at me, <laughs> which is always good. At the moment, we're just checking that any delays towards services are over 10 minutes are put out just to inform the uh, passengers, the people outside, uh, that the service are running late. Ian works in the main control office at the West of Scotland Signalling Centre in the north of the city. We're looking away because we're up here away from the, the sort of passenger. I've worked down there so I know how, how it can be at times with, with the passengers. They just want to get from A to B to get home, you know. So I can understand the frustration. Ian started his career on the railways at Central Station and he has vivid memories of his time there in the early 1980s. Glasgow Central, I started in there in 1982. Monko had arranged an interview for me. He worked in there, he was the, the train information boards, what platforms the trains were believing from and what the stops would be. And it was just all done manually. No computers or anything, just manually. It worked in the mailroom, 16 up near a manager's office. I think it was like an apprenticeship type of thing, getting to know the railway. Once I turned 18, I went down and walked in the station premises that sells within there, and I worked with the carriage cleaners. Carriage cleaners were great to me. It was like mum from mum, <laughs> mum in my work. Oh, every one of them, I, absolutely brilliant. There was these regular people that passed through the station every day, and uh, it was a great place to work in Central Station, I've got to say, for my first job, a great education tool for me, being in there. Central Station back then was kind of darker and dirtier, if you want to put it that way. In the 1980s, Glasgow Central Concourse underwent a major programme of renovation, which saw the station refloored in Terrazzo and the ticket offices and information boards replaced bringing the look of the station much closer to the one we know today. The Central Station is one of the icons. Great people I've worked with, and I, I, I can't say a bad word about anybody I've ever worked with in Glasgow Central Station. Everybody, a character, that, that they were their own, own kind of individuals. The old mess room used to be next to the duty manager's office, we downstairs to it, it was an old boffy area. And the prostitutes would come in there at night. You'd be talking away to them uh, before they went and plied their trades up in Waterloo Street, but they'd come in and get a hot coffee in the winter's nights. Then they'd sit with five, ten minutes in by way. You just got a different side of everything. Got about everything in Glasgow. Very happy memories working in Central Station, yeah. <laughs> At the height of summer, Glasgow Central's commuter footfall is augmented by visitors to the city 
and Scottish holidaymakers passing through en route to destinations all over the UK and abroad. How are you? Hi, my bad Angela, how's yourself? All right, what you been up to? Uh, not really much, just got on the Mediterranean cruise on Tuesday. Nice. So, where about you going? Um, Barcelona, Italy okay. and France and also in Monaco. Oh, okay. as well. You doing any of the excursions? Uh, just probably Barcelona. You need to go up to that La Rambla, it's a big street, it's just got loads of like street acts, a big market right up at the top of the street, it's really good. Is it? I but honestly, it? you'll love it, honestly, you'll love it. Oh, I'm going to be tomorrow. Are you, where are you going? I'm going backpacking around Europe. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That'll be fun. It'll be good. I'm interrailing. <laughs> I'm only off for a week, so I've only literally got one day and one night in each city I'm going to. So I'll probably be knackered by the time I come back, but I'm actually, I, I'm so excited. Vienna to Salzburg, Salzburg to Munich, Munich to Cologne, Cologne to Brussels, Brussels to London, and then home. I probably got lost. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> so yeah, definitely want to go and just explore a little bit. And, See where I end up. You all right there, love? Bye. Next time on Inside Central Station, John is expecting a music festival rush. As you can see with the ticket gates, it's looking quite interesting you. <laughs> a famous face is on their way to work. Kirsty Work is one of the regulars. When I started, she was on. And 14 years later, she's still here. And I'm still here. And an urban masterpiece is revealed. There was rumours that there was Banksy's in here. 